In an era where Sony's first party studios are on hiatus, a blockbuster PS5 exclusive the like of Stellar Blade is very much in demand. Now we've spent time with the short but sweet appetizer, and it's clear Korean developer Shift Up is shaping things up to deliver one of the biggest surprises on April 26th. Gameplay previews prior to last week's demo hinted at an action adventure, a little bit like Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, or perhaps a bit like Ninja Gaiden, with an aesthetic akin to many similar modern action games. Playing through the 90 minute demo and getting a feel for the combat and exploration makes it clear that what we've got on our hands is something more akin to a Souls-like, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice especially. This is because during combat you'll spend a large portion blocking, parrying, and dodging, not unlike From Software's Samurai Opus. Before we get into the nitty gritty though, let's have a word on that awe-striking cinematic intro. Beginning with player character Starship Convoy Airborne 7 emerging to break through an alien blockade perched above the stratosphere. The attack goes awry, the alien invaders easily piercing Starship shields. The player character and her squad jettison in emergency escape pods, but huge numbers of the team die fearing the chaotic descent through Earth's atmosphere. As a spectacle, this sequence is awesome. The disarray and destruction communicates a desperation. These aliens are not to be trifled with, clearly, with strength in numbers being Airborne 7's only chance of penetrating the blockade. The player character herself barely scrapes through, her damaged pod door unable to open until fellow survivor Tachi breaks her out. Flames erupt, explosions are everywhere. It's here we're introduced to the game's basic attacks, blocks, and parries. Combat is immediate, and together with Tachi, we slay through fodder enemies on our desperate attempt to rendezvous with other survivors of our group. There's a basic boss battle at this sequence's culmination, and despite this brute's hulking size and wrecking ball hands, the player character and Tachi take it down with aplomb. The modern action games comparisons are easy to make given the cinematic finale of the brute battle, but once we're exploring the crumbling, collapsing, ruined city, we also get to explore the deeper nuances of Stellar Blade's combat. More advanced dodges, combos, and parries are unlocked, and it becomes clear the game's combat is a much more deliberate, methodical affair, not quite at the breakneck pace of modern action games. Patience is required, and studying enemy attack patterns is demanded, which is why Stellar Blade's closest direct comparison is the aforementioned Sekiro. It's certainly more forgiving, though. The window for successfully deflecting a parry is definitely wider than in Sekiro, for instance. Stellar Blade's more forgiving defensive tactics are supported by controller inputs that are less responsive than its Soulsborne counterparts. There's a temptation, at least early on, to button mash your way through combos, and whilst the game allows you to do this against the preliminary enemies, it certainly become a less worthy tactic as the difficulty ramps up. Also, the responsiveness of the inputs means quick firing your combos isn't as effective as taking a steadier approach, and this is something you'll learn pretty early on. For their part, the combos you can execute, such as Incursion or Onslaught, are flashy and satisfying to pull off. Their combination of squares and triangles are intuitive enough, but pacing yourself on their input is definitely the more optimum strategy. You'll be introduced to larger, more dangerous enemies early on too, with these foes having color-coded attacks which you'll need to watch out for. A red Q signals a frenzied attack is incoming, with blocking, parrying, or dodging altogether being the best defense. Yellow cues cannot be blocked or parried, so getting out of the way swiftly is how the player character will avoid taking damage. Unlock the more advanced dodging ability Blink and blue cues will start appearing. To execute the Blink ability, simply tip the left thumbstick upwards and press circle, whilst the blade glows the same shade of blue as her attacker. She'll swiftly swerve behind the enemy, exposing their unguarded back as they swing fresh air. The blade glows blue a brief moment after the enemy has already started to glow blue, but the window to execute this specialist dodge is as forgiving as the player's parry, so you'll be evading attacks in no time. Complementing the player's blink ability is Repulse, which functions as an inverse dodge. The player character will acrobatically backflip away when the thumbstick is pointed downwards whilst pressing circle, and the color to watch out for this time is purple. With the player character at a safe distance, the optimum strategy next is to execute a swift strafe towards the locked on enemy, with their cooldown animation giving you plenty of time to unleash a combo or two, or perhaps even eliminate the opponent altogether with another of the player's abilities, her beta skills. The beta skills are flashy blade strikes complete with electrical discharge, and these special moves are recharged via a meter which fills with every successful block or parry. Unleashing a beta skill is as simple as holding down L1 whilst you hit an attack button. The skill tree unlocks flashier, more elaborate beta skills as the game progresses, with the idea presumably being to mold these skills into satisfying finishers. 
Also satisfying is the player's retribution finishers, which are unleashed when an opponent's balance meter is depleted. An enemy's balance is indicated above their head alongside their health, and to whittle this down, you'll need to execute perfect parries. Although, again, we say perfect parry, but Stellar Blade is lenient. The retribution finishers are super cool, unnecessarily elaborate brutal enders for the enemies, with the player character plunging her huge blade deep into the recesses of her stunned enemies with grotesquely imaginative flips and slides, acrobatically carving her blade through the soon-to-be carcass. Stellar Blades' combat is certainly the main draw here, but if you've been put off by the Souls-like comparisons and perhaps the chance of its steep difficulty, one thing to know is Shift Up have designed a game to be approachable to a wider net of players than From Software ever have. For starters, there are two difficulty levels players can choose, Normal and a less challenging campaign mode. For information, the writer of this feature completed the demo on Normal mode, so the comments on parry leniency applies to that. While Stellar Blade doesn't hold your hand, it steadily and consistently introduces new combat mechanics, and with a little bit of patience, you'll soon be feeling the unique rhythm fighting as the player character brings. The pacing of these new mechanics comes thick and fast, at least in the game's early stages. When you've only just gotten used to one thing, and the game throws you another. But they're tweaks if anything, it's encouraging rather than disparaging. There's going to be huge scope for playstyles as the player's skill set expands as the game progresses too. This game should not be slept on. If you're a PS5 player and Stellar Blade isn't on your radar, you should give the demo a bash before writing it off entirely. It's destined to be one of PS5's biggest games of the year. So what are your thoughts on this? Go ahead and share them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. We upload every day and would really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.